Ah, uh, hello World Wide Web, I'm Dagger Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair, and we finally reached week five of... So it is finally time to give the fans what they want. Leprechaun in the Hood. Which is exactly what it sounds like. Well, the last few entries seem to be trying to up the ante with locations from LA to Vegas to frickin' outer space. Leprechaun in the Hood takes a much more down-to-earth approach while still giving the setting some identity by having the Leprechaun in the Hood. Inner city, predominantly lower income. Not the most glamorous of locations, but you know, reality for a lot of people. Which is the focus of this movie, with some young up-and-coming hip-hop ists uh, well, they have a hard life and an arguably even harder time getting noticed by the industry. Doubly so when a leprechaun appears in the hood and begins spitting more rhymes than anyone knows what to do with! So what can you even do about that? Let's take a look at Leprechaun in the Hood and see if we can dig it. We open up to retconning! The leprechaun has a few new rules this time, so we gotta cover them right away. Free a leprechaun, you die. Steal his gold, you die. Mess with his golden flute, you die. With that in mind, we suddenly jump to the 70s where Mac Daddy, played by Ice-T, is with his friend Slug, played by Barima McKnight. In search of a golden treasure, this handy-dandy map shows is here. After a short scuffle, they find it! A whole damn pot of gold! Yeah. That's all I want right here. Introducing our MacGuffin for this movie, the Leprechaun's Flute. It's never in any other Leprechaun movie, but it is like 90% of what makes the Leprechaun important this time around. Mac tells Slug that he can take the rest of the gold, but when he takes the golden medallion off the statue from Leprechaun 3, it transforms into a living Leprechaun just like in 3, and stabs Slug in the neck with his own Afro pick. Free at last! Free at last! Hell is Thank God Almighty! Free at last! And just in case you're wondering, uh, yes, the Leprechaun constantly goes there. Mac can't use his gun because the Leprechaun heats it up. No worries, his afro is hiding a spare knife. But when the Leprechaun telekinetically tosses it aside... What? Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, God. Never underestimate the power of the hair. Or the Leprechaun as he tosses that aside just as well. It looks like the end for Mac. Until he pulls a hand in any pressure valve that knocks the Leprechaun back, launching the medallion into the air, and back onto the Leprechaun, which transforms back into a, uh, considerably uglier statue. Now, Ron, you're gonna be turning into stone for God knows how long. Strike a pose! With that, we suddenly skip ahead to present day, the year 2000, to introduce our main group for this tale, Postmaster P, played by Anthony Montgomery, Stray Bullet, played by Rashan Nal, and Butch, played by Red Grant. Their set is going, uh, meh, but it gets even worse when their equipment explodes! This ain't good, as they're trying to audition to perform in a contest which, if they win, will send them to Vegas to perform and maybe get a record deal. So, yeah, important! Postmaster P is like, it's fine, just gotta think positively. Positive affirmation. Affirmate this, motherfuckers. If we don't get this equipment fixed, we ain't winning no contest, we ain't going to no Vegas, and we ain't ever leaving Compton. But Stray doesn't really buy into that the secret bullshit. So they need money. So it's off to the pawn shop to sell a <coughs> authentic Jimi Hendrix guitar to Jackie D, played by Dan Martin. Of course, Jackie ain't buying that this is really Jimmy's guitar, and he ain't buying the guitar either. So it's off to the other shop, owned by Chow Young P, played by Jack Ong. Problem is, uh, it's still an obvious forged signature. You leave Chow's store. Go on, hip and hop your black ass home. They really would have had a lot more luck if they tried the shit on eBay. So that's a bust, but what's this? They just so happen to run into Mac Daddy, and he runs a hip-hop label. But it's the dark side of gangsta rap, which Postmaster P isn't about. Still, Stray thinks they could impress him with what they have. Somehow their pitch of, you could rep us because maybe someday we might be popular, is enough to get him to bring them down to his place and listen to their mixtape. Postmaster P, y'all, positivity, a positive flow through your speakers is what I'm bringing, see? I mean, if they just handed him his mixtape, then they wouldn't be there to break into a cold sweat as he sits there stone-faced listening to their music. Mac Daddy is mildly impressed, but there is a problem. That positivity stuff positively sucks. Don't you know it's all about gangster rap now? Bitches and hoes, smoking the 40s and drinking the blunts. 
Stray Bullet is like, that's cool, but Post Master P stands firm. Positivity is the heart of what they are trying to do. So Mac tells them they can all fuck right off. If they ain't down, they ain't down. Putting them exactly where they were moments before. No money and no chance to win that contest with busted equipment. But Stray has an idea. Mac can still help. He just gotta rob his ass. Oh, we just go break into Max, huh? We go bust in there and just steal his shit, right? Stick him up, motherfucker. Mac, give me your shit. Pack a plaque. Yo, I'm serious, goddammit! Well, I know audio equipment ain't cheap, but maybe uh, rob a liquor store before you decide to pickpocket Bill fucking Gates? Stray figures Max stuff has to be illegitimate anyway, so he won't report it stolen, and they can pawn it no problem. Postmaster P doesn't feel this is a very positive use of their time, though, and doesn't want anything to do with this. We meet at Mackenzie Park, 6.30. We're just playing the cause we dealt, man. Think of it like a modern role-playing game, P. Your options are yes, other yes, sarcastic yes, and no, but actually yes. So he answers no, but actually yes when he leaves but shows up at their meeting spot anyway, ready to break into Max's crib and rob his shit. Fortunately, it seems easy enough. Butch plants explosives around the leprechaun statue, Post finds a gun, Stray finds gold, and Mac finds them all robbing his place. And Postmaster P positively capped his ass. Ah, well, can't stop now. Grab the medallion and snatch the flute from Mac. But before they can escape, the leprechaun returns to life! For a few seconds, anyway, as they blow his ass to smithereens before running like hell. But what's this? Mac survived. The bullet has hit a necklace instead. And the leprechaun lives as well. A lot of time has come and passed. <sighs> But still I see you're a big fat ass. <laughs> and he rhymes. He rhymes! He rhymes all throughout the movie. Ah, oh, I missed that so much while he was in space. Mac calls for backup, but runs to hide from the leprechaun. Which isn't quite so easy when you take into account he's magic as all hell. But you know what else is magic? A little the old Mary Jane, which the leprechaun decides to give a try, and seems quite enamored with. A friend with weed is a friend indeed. But a friend with gold is the best I'm told. As the leprechaun has not come to partake in Puff Puff Pass, but reclaim his riches. As such, he rips Mac's finger clean off and commands he return the rest of his gold or else. But yeah, that means we have a leprechaun scene end without adding to the body count? Ah, well, we just so happen to have a spare William Washington right here, so the leprechaun electrocutes him through the microphone stand. Back with the crew, however, they're trading some gold for some of Jackie D's best equipment, but it seems that Post is holding onto the flute and plays a hypnotic tune that causes everyone to focus upon him completely enraptured in his melody. What? Well, Post, the opening never actually explained what the Leprechaun's flute does, so it's important that you pay attention to these scenes so you have any idea what the MacGuffin is all about. And they reiterate the point mere seconds later as we watch uh, the same scene again. The crew is trading the rest of the gold for the rest of the stuff they need, this time from Chow, and Post uh, plays the fucking flute and the same fucking thing happens. Again. What? The flute makes everyone enamored with you, explaining how Mac Daddy became the biggest name in hip-hop. Think of it like the pick of destiny. Except this movie came out six years prior to that. But while the crew works on their show, Mac Daddy is trying to figure out how to exact revenge. They stole his gold, his flute, and freed the evil leprechaun! But looky here, that hady dady leprechaun petrifying amulet was left behind! How convenient! Slightly less convenient is the leprechaun on the loose! He approaches Jackie D, and he wants his gold! Boy, don't make me laugh. You out here trying to rob Jackie D? What gang you belong to, the shrimps? But of course, Jackie, uh, number one, doesn't believe him, and number two, isn't even remotely intimidated by a guy who comes up to his waist. But later that night, Jackie D is approached by Jackie C, played by Donna M. Perkins. They're estranged, or uh, something. We don't get the most details, but Jackie is amazed and confused to see Jackie again. But Jackie tells Jackie, don't worry, Jackie's here. But Jackie is horrified when Jackie's face suddenly turns hideously ugly, and Jackie screams as Jackie kills Jackie in short order. <laughs> Oh. 
And interestingly enough, it's not that the Leprechaun transformed into a woman again. He has the power of possession this time around, able to control people with his Leprechaun will. Which means he had to have known about Jackie and Jackie, and went out of his way to set this up, just to be um, extra evil about it. The crew, though, partying with their ill-gotten gains. Except for Post, who is sitting this one out, saying it's not right. This isn't the positivity he stands for. Stray is like, well, shit happens, but let's worry about partying today and being positive tomorrow. But then Max shows up and demands they return his flute. They don't make with it, so he goes to shoot them. But oh darn it, that bitten off finger hurts too bad, allowing the group to parkour their asses out of there. Getting some distance between themselves and Mac Daddy, they have to figure out what to do. Man, what can we do? Lay low. All right, we just got to get to that audition, win that motherfucker, and be in Vegas for the big payoff. Yes, the best way to hide from a motherfucker who's trying to track you down and kill you is to go to that scheduled event that you signed up for weeks ago. Looking for somewhere to hide where Mac would never go, they wind up in the apartment of Miss Fontaine Rivera, played by Lobo Sebastian. I love me some company. I also love me some cash, so come on, motherfucker, you know the drill. Hand it over. Ain't no scrubs up in here. I don't know if that's really the safest option for them. I mean, just because Mac Daddy doesn't go around town rapping about his rendezvous with Rivera, that doesn't mean he's not a regular. But oh yeah, there is a leprechaun in this movie, and the leprechaun wants his gold. Some of which is in the hands of Chow over here, so the leprechaun puts his hands on Chow. <laughs> Doing a kind of a neck massage to death. But with all this running around and trying not to get killed, the crew hasn't had time to rap in a while. They need to prepare for the audition. Except a slight problem with their plan to take over the music industry. Their rapping sucks. That is, until Post plays a piece on the pipe, getting a much more positive reception for their performance. This be the story, ain't got no glory, no place to go but up, that's where it's at. That just leaves me wondering why Max thought they even had talent after listening to their mixtape earlier. Oh wait, if the flute makes everyone hang on to your every word. <laughs> Like the video, subscribe right now, and please leave a comment before the views go down. I was born in the woods, now reviewing Lep in the Hood, because technology is a part of me and does nothing but good. But this shining moment has negative connotations that Post can see. They suck. They can't play without the flute, and Mac Daddy will not stop pursuing them until he gets the flute back and its magical powers. Which is true, but they seem to be forgetting about the leprechaun that is also after them! Which Miss Fontaine catches on the way in and, uh, escorts to the bedroom, where the leprechaun kills them! And the group dismisses the screams as just hot, raunchy, intense conversations. Until they see the leprechaun! What are we gonna do? I don't know, man. If the wrought iron rule is still in place, the fire escape makes a handy-dandy leprechaun escape in a pinch. But that's not the case here, and Butch can do one better. As the group's resident egghead, he can combine the chemical compounds and the various feminine hygiene products at their disposal to throw together a makeshift firebomb, engulfing the Leprechaun in flames and giving them a chance to run like hell. Now, having to deal with the Leprechaun that survived blowing the fuck up kinda clues them in that, hey, maybe magic is real, so therefore their best bet to avoid this evil is to head to the church, introducing Reverend Hansen, played by Ivory Ocean. Stray's like, uh, can we spend the day here? Give me 50 bucks. Hansen's okay with that but he wants some more. Our musical entertainment for this morning got canceled. Seems the lead singer got his ass arrested again. I don't know, man. By the time the show starts, it's up in the air how many of these assholes will still be around. As such, it's the very next scene! Reverend Hansen gives a rousing sermon, asking everyone to put their faith in God and their income into the collection plate, shortly before the crew takes the stage and gives the uh, worst damn performance of the entire movie. Jesus loves me, oh, yeah. this I know. If he don't, I find a hope. Jeez, man, read the room. So the entire congregation decides to say fuck it and leave, but that's nothing the magical flute can't fix getting everyone to show up. Yo, that's coolio. Wow! You know, this is not the worst movie that man's ever been in. Jesus loves me, this I know. If he don't, I find a hoe. His mama's name was Mary Joe. His disciples want some bad mofo. And it 
seems the flute's magic is entirely in making everyone like the music, as the lyrics are the fucking same. Eh, oh, whatever, it's got a good rhythm. After turning that shit show around, Stray is convinced this flute is frickin' magical, and Mac Daddy will definitely kill their asses to get it back. They won't have to wait long either, as Mac Daddy has arrived. So it looks bad, but they swear if they go down, they go down fighting. Right. 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 But the leprechaun is also here! Which kind of makes that hiding out in a church idea also a failure. So they must run, but are cornered by Mac Daddy. But before Mac can kill them, the leprechaun approaches and blasts his bodyguards back to bits! So Mac Daddy is like, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna sit this one out. And the crew gets a new plan. It seems that Reverend Hanson just so happens to have a handy dandy wrought iron safe! I mean, wrought iron doesn't do diddly in this movie, but it can still be used as a little throwback to Leprechaun 2 as they trick the Leprechaun into running into the safe, trapping him inside. Now look, you can stop all that goddamn yelling, this is the Lord's house! Ain't nobody in here afraid of your ass! Oh, come on, is there a single character present who hasn't pissed their pants? That taken care of, we actually get a scene showing the characters aren't being stupid about the MacGuffin. They try and sample it so they might get the flute's magical powers without needing the flute, but alas, their recordings play back nothing. No worries, Leprechaun is locked up, they got the flute, they can just win the contest and go to Vegas! What's a locked up Leprechaun supposed to do about that? From the depths of the netherworld, I summon you, me zombie fly girls. Yeah, it's a bit of lore the opening neglected to mention about the Leprechaun. He's got fly girls. Zombie fly girls. Because he's in the hood. So while the crew spits rhymes like they never spat before, Hanson is approached by a mysterious lady with green eyes. Thus the leprechaun rips through his back and chest. I don't know how he already got out of the safe, but he did. Oh well, the point is they kicked so much ass, they are approached by the only white guy in this movie, Stephen M. Porter, who plays Barry Grady, vice president of Dope Discs Productions, the biggest hip-hop label, and he's there to tell them they are going to Vegas, and he believes in them. Their sound is special, and he wants them to win. So they're frickin' hyped. But then the zombie fly girls come in because the leprechaun is here! He wants the flute! Stray's like, fuck you, but the leprechaun can control his arm, pointing the gun at Butch. Which means they don't really have a choice here. Post hands over the flute, and all the hope they have of winning. So near, and yet so far. Now live with the thought. You were almost a star. You know, you could have avoided all of this if you had just practiced and had some talent, but I guess it's a little late for that now. Realizing this, Post lunges at the Leprechaun, but the Leprechaun kind of outmagics them. It doesn't take kindly to this behavior, twisting Stray's arm back around to point the gun at his own head. No, Post. No. Oh, shit. We're an hour into the fifth movie in this franchise, and we finally reached a kill that I feel like actually mattered. And this ain't an over-and-done-with-who-cares kind of death, neither. They leave Stray's body in a car and have to press on. Life really ain't fucking fair. Butch says without Stray and without the flute, they're pretty much fucked. Much like the ladies that the zombie fly girls collect for the leprechaun. Yeah, he's still kicking around the hood, big pimpin', as you do. And he's going to post Mother's House, his poor blind mama, played by Baby Drake. But she's not the only one who's gonna have problems seeing after this. But it's all just a dream! As nightmares are kind of post thing right now, haunted by visions of dead stray talking about going to Vegas. But the next time he's jilted out of bed, it's by Butch, who, believe it or not, is actually dressed like that. This isn't another nightmare. Butch has a plan to get the flute back. It's all they have to live for, so let's give it our all. He's been studying leprechauns, and the four leaf clovers actually matter again. So, mix it up with some weed, and they can knock the little bastard out and steal the flute back. How are we supposed to get close to his ass? Only one way, bro. Ah, the classic dress and address to address the problem. Though if that's going to work, then shouldn't Miss Fontaine have had a little more luck with the leprechaun earlier? 
So they suit up and head out for the big climax. Getting picked up by the zombie fly girls, Post slips them some clover weed, breaking the spell, allowing him to just straight up ask them where to go to find the leprechaun. As such, the leprechaun has no backup when he and Butch make it to his lair, all dressed up with nowhere to go. Slipping Lepi a joint lace with luck extract, he conks out, allowing Post to grab the flute and run! <laughs> Right into Mac Daddy, who just fucking shoots Butch right off the bat. Jeez, and I was always told that you didn't want to wind up in the ER wearing dirty underwear. The outfit is the least of Butch's worries, though, as he is dead. So it's Postmaster P versus Mac Daddy. Mac isn't worried. He points out that he has the key to taking down the leprechaun right here. And besides, Post is some positive message pussy who ain't gonna do shit. Get that fucking gun out of my face. You ain't about to kill nothing, little bitch. <laughs> But after having to live through Leprechaun in the Hood, the man is well past his breaking point. Taking down Mac Daddy. But, oh yeah, he was the only one who knew how to defeat the Leprechaun. And uh, yeah, there is still that Leprechaun problem. Faye's got a surprising tolerance for clovers. But what's this? Mac Daddy ain't dead, and he smashes a chair over the Leprechaun! <laughs> 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 Never, never mind, uh, Mac is very, very dead after that one. But he throws the medallion into the air, and when it comes down, we suddenly skip ahead to Postmaster P being the biggest name in hip-hop. How? Well... <laughs> because he's another one of the Leprechaun zombies now. Yeah, the Leprechaun won. Which means as this story comes to a close, Warwick blesses us with a wee little Leprechaun ditty. I'll go up, you go down. We'll call sing your love to three. Lep in the hood, help to do no good. Lep in the hood, when we're bad, we're good. And uh, props to the guy for giving his all on that one. Anyway, that was Leprechaun in the Hood. I liked it a lot better than I thought I was going to. Of course, coming off of Leprechaun 4 in space, I was just happy to get a story that felt like the Leprechaun actually belonged in it. At least, if you don't think too deep about it. I mean, the Leprechaun is clearly a Leprechaun, he's speaking in limericks, and magic is integral to the plot at hand. But then again, there is a little something that bothers me about this movie. While it's a fine Leprechaun movie, if you were to take the Leprechaun out of it entirely and change it so Mac Daddy was a much more important character, you wind up with a different and arguably better movie. Postmaster P wants to be a famous rapper, wants to be a force for positivity, he's told he can only make it in gangster rap, rejects that, but the situation of being broke as fuck in Compton forced him and his friends to resort to theft to even be able to partake in the contest. Mac finds his stolen goods at the pawn shops, and he's the one who pursues the crew and forces them into hiding. The contest comes, they do well, but Mac Daddy then goes back there and he's the one who kills Stray to keep them down. As revenge, Post and Butch plan the cross-dressing to get close to Mac, Mac kills Butch, and Post kills Mac leaving himself as the one to come out on top as the next big thing in hip-hop, but only after his ordeals to get there end up turning him into the gangsta image that he was trying to overcome. So I'm musing about a version of this movie that doesn't exist, but I'm wondering if that it was the original intention and in order to be greenlit, the writer was told, sure, we can do your movie, but we gotta turn it into a horror comedy and throw a leprechaun into it. Still, the Leprechaun was thrown in a lot better than they were in Leprechaun 4, as I said. A magic MacGuffin to hold everything together felt natural enough, though it's hard to explain how broken equipment was much of an issue for the group when, without the flute, they were talentless on top of it. The big thing, though, was that the movie was fun. We got actual semi-interesting characters to follow, the acting was hit and miss, but the overall package was enjoyable, even if the idea seemed quite ridiculous on the surface. Coming in at three clover lace joints out of five. And I'm just left wondering if the movie really was supposed to be leprechaunless from the start. That version could have been a four. Or a five if done right. Thank you all for watching. I have been Decker Shadow. And remember, Jackie loved Jackie, but Jackie didn't know where Jackie was until Jackie came back. And then Jackie killed Jackie because Jackie wasn't Jackie. Write it down. It's going to be on the test. I was born in the woods, now reviewing Lep in the Hood because technology is a part of me and does nothing but good. <laughs> that was shit.
Did you like the video? I sincerely hope you did. Please subscribe and hit the bell to help make sure that I'm a hit. And not to make you sad, but for Coolio, this ain't bad. That'd be pterodactyl. I reviewed that shit right there. Please click and watch and like, cause I got the best hair. Or do the algorithm, cause I don't fucking.